This is Eric Parker with One Number, and today I want to do a Tableau tutorial on how to write nested if statements uh, in Tableau. If you're coming to Tableau from Excel or some comparable tool, uh, you probably understand structurally how a nested if statement works, but the exact syntax can just change a little bit uh, depending on what tool you're using. So we'll go ahead and dive into an example in Tableau. I'm going to use the sample superstore sales data set. Uh, if you are looking to utilize something comparable, I've just put the file path for where this is on my computer uh, up on Notepad. Um, so your computer will have some similar place um, where you'll be able to grab a data source like this to follow along. Um, so with this, let's say I'm looking at my data set and I'm trying to understand how large are the different segments of our business and those that are large or those that are small, um, which of them are profitable and which of them are unprofitable. So basically we're going to break our data set down into, you know, four quadrants. All right. Uh, so the way that I would start this is I'm going to create a calculated field. Uh, and so let's say that what we're going to define as a large uh, category of our business would be more than 100 unique orders. Uh, and then what's profitable would just be something that made more than zero dollars okay so i'm going to start by using my order id field okay um, so i'm gonna hit the drop down next to that field and then select create calculated field okay so i'm going to name this calculation um, size and profitability of segment i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this editor a bit so that you can follow along more easily so here's where I'll start things. I will say if the count distinct of order ID is greater than or equal to 100, then, okay, so it's kind of our first logical clause here. So greater than 100 would mean that it is a large order. So I'll say then I'm gonna do a line break and this is just my own personal preference. I'm gonna tab in to a new line so that I can make out like, oh, this is actually gonna be a new if statement um, separate, well, I guess I should say nested within the first if statement. So then I'll say, okay, um, if sum of profit is greater than zero, then, and I'm going to put this in quotes because I just want a text output, I'll say large, comma, profitable. Okay, so now if a criteria met the first line, greater than or equal to 100 orders, and the second line, greater than zero dollars in profit, then it's a large segment and it's profitable. I'm gonna do a new line break, tab in again, and then uh, I'm just gonna do a space because I like everything to look all nice and lined up. Um, and then I will say, else if sum of profit is less than or equal to zero, then large, comma, unprofitable. Okay. Let's expand the size of this window a little bit so we can see it all. Now, every single if statement in Tableau needs an end so that Tableau knows there's no more logical clauses coming its way. So I'll say end. And I like to wrap the whole nested if statement in parentheses. That's not technically necessary. I just find that helpful so that I know this is its own distinct chunk within this larger calculation. Okay, so now we need to handle uh, those segments of the business that have less than 100 orders. So I will say, else if the count distinct of order ID is less than 100, then, and we're gonna follow something very similar here. So just to save a little bit of time, I'm actually just gonna copy that nested if statement from above and then paste it down here below. So we'll say, if sum of profit is greater than zero, then small, comma, unprofitable. And else if the sum of profit is less than or equal to zero, then small, unprofitable. So same general structure, it's just small instead of large. And then to close this entire calculator field out, I just need to put end one more time so that Tableau knows this very first if statement that we started on line one, is now coming to a close, all right? So this is a good place just to pause and assess your calculation, make sure there's no errors, could be a missing end, could be a missing parenthesis. 
Um, you can see that so far it says, great, my calculation is valid. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so if I just take this field size and profitability of segment and just drop this on color in the marks card right now, it's just gonna give me a little squares for each uh, unique combination of subcategory and segment. So you can see, okay, accessories is blue. And if you go reference that to the color legend, that means it's a large and profitable segment. Uh, so let's make this whole thing a little bit more intuitive. I'm gonna start by editing my colors. So I'll go to the marks card to be able to do that. Click on the color tab. And I'm gonna select edit colors. So let's say large profitable is dark green, large unprofitable is dark red. Um, I'm gonna switch color palettes and then go to the Tableau 20 palette. I think that's gonna give us more options here. Small unprofitable will be light red and small unprofitable will be light green. Okay, so now I can, can just get like a quick matrix here to be able to see like, oh, where are my largest and most unprofitable segments? Use this color legend, highlight those three. Um, now, for those of you that are kind of picky and you're like, I want something that looks more like a conditionally formatted table in Excel, not just these kind of little random one-off squares. Um, so unfortunately, just moving the size up still leaves them in their square format, so they just kind of start to run together. So let me teach you a little trick that I will use in a situation like this, where I have a discrete field, right? Meaning that the tab or the, uh, the pill color is blue, um, and I want it to be, you know, proper conditionally formatted cells, you know, something more like this, where when you drop a um, continuous field on color, it fills it in all the way, like the rectangles get filled out the whole way. All right, so here's my little trick for this. Uh, first, I'm gonna change my mark type from automatic. Okay, so here in the marks card, I'm gonna change that from automatic to bar. I know it's gonna seem weird at first because then there's gonna be just these little starts of bars. Um, but then I want all these bars to be the same size and they're going to basically become cells. So the way that I do that is I'm going to right click in my data pane, create a calculated field. I'll just call this field one and it will just be the number one. It's effectively just a placeholder. I'll hit okay. Now I'm going to drag one to the size tab in the marks card. So at first it's going to be weird just because the categories that have more orders are going to be larger bars, but then I'm going to change the aggregation of that sum one that's on size in the marks card to be min. So now every bar will be one as long as it had one transaction. So what I need to do now to be able to get these to fill out is I'm going to increase the size of my marks in the marks card. Okay. Um, to get them to be broken up a little bit more, I need to add borders. So I'm going to go to the color tab in my marks card, select the border drop down, and add a white border around them. So you can see it's starting to look more like a normal conditionally formatted table from Excel. And then I can put whatever I want on there. I'm just going to put our calculation actually, size and profitability of segment, and I'm going to drop that on label in the marks card. You need to do a little uh, alignment here, so that can also be done from the label tab in the marks card. So I'll center those. And now, you know, not only do I have a color legend where I can, you know, highlight whatever segments seem to interest me, uh, but at the same time, I also have those labels sitting on top of this. So this is a little busy, you know, and I'd probably take a little bit more time to clean this up or think about are there specific labels I want to show and other labels that I don't, um, but. I think we've been able to cover the ground of talking about nested if statements, and we'll look forward to talking about more visual analytics in some future videos. Um, so one more time, I'll just flash that nested if statement calculation up on the screen um, for those that wanted to see that once again, or maybe do a screenshot. Uh, and with that said, uh, thank you for joining for this video. Uh, it's been fun to make these, and I'll look forward to catching you on a future video soon.